welcome to Diffuse Congruence. My name is Zaki Hassan. I'm here with Provez Ahmed. Yes, it is. And I am Provez Ahmed. And it is good to be here. Uh, and I think those who have listened to the show probably long enough were anticipating and waiting with breath abated um, for this episode. <laughs> to hear Zucky and I ruminate. About the brand new Star Wars movie. That's right. About the Star Wars episode. But not just Zucky and, and, and I. Yes, we are joined by our special guest, Umar Ansari. Hey, guys. Sound like him. How's hey, it going? Um, from, one, uh, from one Umar to another Umar, so... That's right. We we are we normally have uh, Omar Muzaffar, a film yeah. critic, noted film critic, uh, joining us. But we decided to to uh, keep it in the family. Keep maybe. it in the family. <laughs> exactly. I, and I'm not a film critic, uh, but I am a huge, huge Star Wars fan. So I'm excited to be here. Thank you very much. Exactly. It should be fun talking about the movie, which we saw together on Thursday night. That's as right. As we've been doing for the past four or five years for all the new movies, right? Yes. Uh, so we are, of course, talking about The Rise of Skywalker, Episode 9, which is the close of this current trilogy, and per Disney's marketing, the close of, quote-unquote, the Skywalker saga, which yeah. began 42 years ago. Well, or, and, and, and speaking of Omer's fandom, uh, I have to say this because, um, you know, he and I have been entrenched in this, fran- uh, in this fandom since the very beginning, I think, right? Oh, for I mean, sure. our Early earliest 80s. memories are of Star Wars. Absolutely, the the toys, the 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 costumes, everything, right? Exactly. Sure. Uh, who, who would be Luke and who would be Han? <laughs> <laughs> Many arguments. <laughs> Many arguments. That's right. Um, did you ever have that? Like, like, was there like a like a character that you wanted to play because he was cooler than the other one, or it was like Han always the cooler? Cal- you know, when when character? I was a kid, yeah. uh, of course, Luke Skywalker, and then uh, as I got older, uh, Han was like the guy I identified with. Yeah. Uh, well, wanted to identify with <laughs> <laughs> because who didn't want to identify with Harrison Ford, right? But yeah. but I definitely remember uh, to to your point. You know, uh, I was not born when uh, the original Star Wars came out, but uh, my brother is five years older than me, so yeah. I always say I was a Star Wars fan from the cradle, and uh, just through osmosis and through my brother, I sort of got caught up uh, very quickly. So I'm I'm yeah. part of that that middle generation that got to experience the original trilogy holistically ah. but was still old enough to uh complain about the prequels <laughs> yeah we could we could talk about our star wars memories for, for forever, forever yeah. right yeah, like yeah, from yeah. whether it's the toys or uh the trips we made for the prequels i actually flew out to houston yeah that's right or uh attack of the clones may 2002 and yeah that's right and if there happened to be msg conference that's right a muslim student muslim support group which we've talked about right? yeah yeah we, we've talked about that uh, about that conference about that uh, about the uh, retreat right and we uh we haven't talked about but yeah you, you that's right we saw attack of the clones together but even before that um you and i were psyching ourselves up for the phantom menace that's right that's right because right? you right. made some trips to houston out right before like circa 98 99 uh before phantom menace and so we we were totally um you know obsessing over like a week before, if I, if I, if <laughs> and, I recall. And uh, Pervez and I, That's our, right. like, first interaction yeah. was 20 years ago. God, wow. Good right. Lord. That's right. <laughs> what year was that wedding? It would it have was, been 99. It was summer of 99. It was summer. after Phantom Menace. And right. I was, you know, being an idiot about the Phantom Menace. To be no, I mean, well... Well, well, I guess idiots gravitated to each other because what <laughs> I remember it was at a Walima of my cousin Noor and and family friend to you, and uh, and uh, we uh, I was just making the rounds in terms of like trying to find a place to sit for dinner and what what have you, and I hear this young man <laughs> talking about Jar Jar Binks, and I said, okay, now that's a conversation I want to sit in on. Oh no, <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> I I always say. I'm so glad social media did not exist when the Star Wars prequels were coming out because I would, uh, I would probably have left a horrific paper trail of just incessant nerdery, uh, you know, which I just kind of cringe at now, you know, because I see the way people complain about these films now on tw- Twitter is just littered with with just people constantly complaining about this stuff, and I'm like, yeah. man, I'm glad, I'm glad there's no paper trail. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. That's right. Well, I guess rather than bearing the lead, um, what do you? Uh, let's talk about Rise of Skywalker. Yeah, yeah, and what our thoughts are. So, yeah, and and since I'm a total newbie to <laughs> podcasting, in fact, I didn't know what a podcast was until I listened to 
one of Zucky's podcasts, what, six, seven years ago. Probably. Since then, I'm, I listen to a lot of podcasts on my drive right. in, the, in the Silicon Valley, my long commute. But I've never actually put on the headphones like I'm doing now and talking into the mic, which is kind of interesting, kind of cool. <laughs> uh, still getting a little used to it. But uh, I did put together a little list of things we could talk about, which uh, pretty high level. But uh, I was thinking we start off with impressions, then we'll yeah. get then we'll get into it. So why don't we start off with spoiler free yeah. first impressions? That's right, and then we'll 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 jump right in. And and bef- but before that, actually, I okay. I thought why why maybe we just even mentioned why are we ha- talking about Star Wars on hmm. a Muslim American podcast? And we don't need to. We could probably spend a long time, but just real quick, right. just to kind of connect the dots. For listeners of Diffuse Congruence, why are we talking about Star Wars? So for me, I mean, and, and I'm, I'm going to actually uh, say a few words and then I'm going to send it over to Zucky to, to either add some more context or to uh, give his impressions because then I want to, I don't want to be the first person to give my impressions of um, <laughs> like the new movie. But I will say, so for me, it's kind of simple. It's not along thematic lines, although I know a lot has been written about the Jedi and about, you know, it's, it's, it's connection to Islamic tradition and so on. But for me, it's more... And, and and this goes to what we've unra- uncovered as we've done six years of these episode of, of of this podcast, which is that my experiences or our shared experiences just here, the three of us, uh, are not just limited to the three of us, nor are they limited to myself, for example. So, I know that to a broad spectrum of people um, and Muslims that I've known all my life. Star Wars has meant something, and that's just a part of the. And and again, we can get into maybe the whys and 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 again, like the, like I said, like the themes and so on. But for me, it's more about this sort of collective shared experience that I know at least, and and it could be just anecdotally, but that I know that is is shared by so many uh, fellow Muslim Americans who are you know like us fans of this franchise and so for me to kind of talk about the the movie or this or this um the entire you know saga as it were or star wars in general uh, on this podcast just makes sense because i think that as i said just from a shared experience it's something that is not just limited to myself at least in my experiences i think it's true i mean you know i always tend to look at the stories that last, mm. and you say, why did they last, right? And here we are 42 years later, and we still talk about the Star Wars uh, saga. We talk about it in terms of a franchise. We talk about it in terms of people's memories. And, you know, there's lots of wannabe Star Wars <laughs> that have <laughs> sprung up in the interim. And, and, you know, they came and went. They made, maybe made some impact. But we still talk about Star Wars, and why is that? And, you know, and it goes to, in a very broad sense, uh what George Lucas was ahead of the curve on, right? Where he's tapping into collective human archetypes and above and beyond that, uh, the stories that persist touch certain thematic, uh, uh, recurring points. And so, you know, that's why like, obviously star, look, let's not be naive. It is a money minting machine and it is a massive Disney branded exercise, but Star Wars long preceded Disney, right? And Star Wars will exist long into the future. Uh, there, you know, there, there's something there, right? And and I always say the things that last, we need to ask ourselves, well, why? Why do they last? And mm-hmm. That conversation's always worth having. Yeah, yeah. Those are those are actually both different answers than, than I mean, maybe I'm giving the the canned answer, but actually, to me, you know, I like I like my kids watching Star Wars because it does present good and evil and yeah. struggle against yourself and those types of um, topics. And and a lot of the new new movies like Deadpool and 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 some of the others, it's this not it's not quite as cut and dry. And I, I like the purity mm. of Star Wars. But um, that's that's probably a whole topic in and of itself. But let's let's go ahead and jump into first impressions. Uh Zeki, go ahead. Spoiler free first impression. Uh, I think it's a very good film. I think well, let me rephrase. I think, I think it's, it is a flawed film, but that doesn't make it any less enjoyable. So, so the analogy I make is, uh, you know, uh, Return of the Jedi is an imperfect film. You know, we can we you can pick it to within an inch of its life, but I'll tell you what: whenever 
uh, I channel surf across Return of the Jedi, I stop. And there's things in it that are uh, powerful and poignant. And I think this works on that same level. And and I it gave me what I expected because that was what I walked into the theater being like, I want something that's at the very least on the same level story-wise as Return of the Jedi. I got that. So uh, it's been interesting to see the, you know, because I saw it obviously a couple of days. I saw it a day before reviews dropped, right? So that's in a way the the best and worst window to watch a movie in. Because you're kind of, it's like you're in a hyperbaric chamber. You don't know what other people think. So I'm like, I had like 12 hours to form an opinion. And then you jump on Rotten Tomatoes and you're like, wow, what? You know? Um, but I liked it. I, I, I personally uh, have enjoyed uh, every installment of this current trilogy. So for me, I thought it was a uh, effective close to this chapter. So as a film critic, you're, it sounds like you're in the, in the forty percent of film critics who who who, uh, who liked it, I gave it a thumbs up. Nice. Okay, yeah. I yeah. like that. That's right. And uh, we'll and get it. We'll I'm get... sorry. I was going to say, if we're talking about critical response, I think it's it's worth noting, and maybe we'll get into this a little later. I certainly want to get into it a little later, which is, you know, juxtaposing this in terms of its critical and fandom reaction to um, what we saw with the Last Jedi, the yes. last installment in this in, in this saga, which is that highly acclaimed critically. But the audience score was again. If we're just talking about Rotten Tomatoes, sure. So you saw a complete inverse in terms of um, uh, what we saw with the Last Jedi, which yeah. which I'm convinced there was a little bit of gaming going on there. Interesting. Um, I I I think there was a concerted campaign to drive down the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, which that's not like conspiracy for which co- movie for for the Last Jedi. Okay. To to um, you know, because of course, uh, you know. That inverse, yeah. as you mentioned, you know, it's in the nineties. I think in terms of the critical approval, I think ninety-one or ninety-three percent. Yeah, yeah. So okay, we're going to jump into. We're going to talk about the, our 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 rankings oh, later right, on. Oh, right, right, right. So give me, give me, Barbara, give me your spoiler-free yeah. first impressions, and then we'll we'll dive into it too. Why I, I think. For me, context is important. I think that uh, going in, I, I was I, I appreciated that context, which is that this was an un, unenviable, if that's right, um, and an impossible task, which is to close out not only this trilogy, but to close out a nine-part uh, saga, and to close out forty-two years of a legacy. So, and and to close out a character who whose actor you no longer have access to. Yeah. Ah, right. Carrie Fisher. Yeah. I mean, talk about unenviable. That's right. That's right. So I think knowing all of that, I knew that, you know, it wasn't going to, you know, it wasn't going to hit all of the, I guess, what am I trying to say? Like, it, it wasn't going to speak to me or I wasn't going to walk out of the theater just being completely satiated all parts of me, which is, you know, the part of me that has, that has celebrated these, like, like this film, uh, saga for 42 years of my life, 40 plus years of my life. Um, and then also to be able to adequately close out, um, you know, this present trilogy. And like you said, I mean, the kind of impossible task of having to, um, you know, uh, put an end to a character that is inextricably connected to Star Wars, which is Princess Leia, General Leia Organa. So, so yeah, so no, knowing all of that, I would say that, I mean, I, I agree it, for me, there are parts that I loved, absolutely loved ecstatically. And then there are parts that, you know, um, I, I'm, I'm a little bit more critical of. And, um, one thing I will say also in one thing I remember saying on this podcast, in fact, um, when we were talking about Rogue One, was that I finally saw a Star Wars movie that spoke to me in equal parts, uh, the 10-year-old me, the inner child, as well as the, at that time, whatever, 30-something, 40-whatever-something-year-old me as well. Whereas I don't know if I can sincerely say that about this movie because I think this movie certainly, um, you know, pulled the chords and struck all the right nerves and chords in terms of the inner child in me, but I don't know if it fully satisfied me as a 45-year-old man watching this movie okay so okay well i'll give you my my take Please. i loved it so i really liked it the first time and a lot of that was just processing and connecting the dots between what i saw in the trailer and waiting for this scene to come up and listen and watching and see how things unfold second time i was just 
all in, loved it. And, and the analogy I'll give you is like I'm watching a, a, a sports game where my team's down, and that's and the, being down is where I felt the the saga or the trilogy was after the last Jedi. Mm. Um, we'll talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then watching my team come back from being in a corner or being down like 30 points in the fourth quarter or being a boxer, like wait, you know, almost down for the count and then come back. And then the first time I saw it when he actually won, let's just say the, the, the game, the team won, it's like watching the comeback, you're in awe and you're like processing. And then the second time you can actually cheer because mm. you know, they're going to win. Right. Mm-hmm. But no, I loved, I definitely loved it. It's, it's up there on my, on my list, but we'll, which we'll get to. So, so what, what did you guys love? Let's, let's jump into spoiler Spoiler, say three, four, five things you loved about it. Well, I, and, and I want to also call attention to something that we've sort of alluded to, but we haven't maybe named necessarily or at least, you know, uh, explicitly mentioned, which is um, this movie is dense. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot going on, and I think multiple viewings are in order. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I'm going to see any Star Wars front movie multiple times, no matter what it is. I mean, I, I will say unabashedly I saw Phantom Menace six and a half times. <laughs> And I'll explain the half maybe at some later point. But, but the point is, you know, I was obsessed with it. And 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 then in hindsight, of course, then, you know, I I, I, I realized that it just wasn't going to, you know, it just wasn't going to live up to my expectations no matter how many times I saw it. But um, but I think that with this movie, you're right. I think I, I, I also, like you, have seen it twice. I think Zucky has also seen it, what, three times? Three times. And I think it's one of those movies, certainly, that I came to appreciate more the second time. And I think I'll probably even appreciate it one more time and and I think I, I'm I'm pretty sure I will see it one more time Star so Wars, Star Wars movies can I think they should be dense mm. I actually like the fact that it's it's dense because it's gonna get um, unraveled as you watch it more and more yeah. if it was if it's too straightforward just three simple acts you can't even get bored after watching it two three times right okay but with this one is because it is so dense mm. I think it, it makes for makes for uh, future view viewings interesting so what did you love, Zucky? Uh, you know, I think, uh, I first of all, you know, it's worth mentioning, you guys know this already, uh, The Last Jedi, I'm a huge fan of that movie. I absolutely love it. I think it's one of the best Star Wars movies ever made. And so uh, when it came time for this one, I knew going in that this was not going to be tonally similar to that. And that's completely separate from all the internet noise and everything else. It was just like uh, what we saw in the original trilogy was the Empire Strikes Back went down a much darker path and then they pulled things back a little bit more, a little bit more mainstream of the third one. So I was, I was expecting that coming in. So I think that really helped. But what, what I loved about it it, that those expectations helped. But what I really loved is that despite what a lot of people are saying, it doesn't undo or overwrite what Ryan Johnson did with The Last Jedi. I think it it ably builds on uh, a lot of the story points that were there. And I think the two of these films really fit together well. And uh, this, this goes to something I've said all along. I really hope that in the years to come, once all the, you know, the, expectations and everything are, are stripped away and people just view this trilogy as a holistic thing i hope they really see how effectively these two will play off each other and for all the complaints about oh they didn't have a plan which yeah i mean they didn't they're for the trilogy they were making these up as they went however film is dialectical you know you put two things together and whether intended or not it creates new meaning and the last jedi stacked up against the rise of skywalker you emerge with a, an interesting dialogue that feeds in both directions. See, it's funny how the last Jedi keeps every conversation, uh, even about the rise of Skywalker. The last Jedi, people do bring up the last Jedi. It's such a, it's such a like a polarizing film. Yeah, and it, it just keeps coming up. And, yeah. and 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 my analogy about the sports is, it's like to me, I didn't hate the last Jedi. I liked a lot of it, but I did feel it did put the Star Wars franchise in a bit of a corner. Like there was really nowhere clear to go after after the movie. And some people say that's a good thing. I saw that as like again, your my team. Let's say the Warriors uh, or the Rockets mm-hmm. for a lot of uh, Houston <laughs> fans here. Um, they're down twenty five points in the in the third quarter, going into the fourth. Now the te- to me, Rise of Skywalker was the comeback, so I can kind of enjoy the third uh, third quarter again right mm. because i know they won the game so i can mm. watch the whole game now mm. but the third quarter had me worried right that's kind of how i see 
A Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker. So as, as someone who doesn't follow athletics at all, all, <laughs> I, all I just heard was sport, 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 fair enough, sport, fair sport, sport, sport. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, I, I think Zeki and I are both are like the least likely to give any kind of sports analogy. So uh, we appreciate Omer coming on the show and, and, yeah. and, and, and already inundating us with sports analogies. Like so. like <laughs> it's a fresh take. It's well, a fresh well, take. Uh, let's see if I can, maybe I'll do that when we well, have like... I, I uh, want to say a couple of things. Well, one thing I want to say is for sure, uh, guys, if, you, if any Anybody's listening out there, we're going to get into spoilers, so you've been warned. So if you haven't seen, you know, The Rise of Skywalker, watch it first. Or if you don't mind it being completely ruined for you, then you you listen at your own peril. But because um, I do want to get into spoilers, but I think uh, we are I, there's a, we, we've already teased this conversation. And I know this may not be to exactly Omer's kind of order uh, in terms of how the, like the topics we were going to probably cover. But I think now, because, Zucky, you've raised the issue, and Omar, you all kind of talked about it, a la the third quarter uh, analogy, which is the rise of Skywalker. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, which is The Last Jedi yes. and, and, and where that left the franchise and then where this picks up. Because to me, as much as I enjoyed, like I said, I enjoyed The Rise of Skywalker, the, I think... The, the it, Last Jedi? Or? The Rise of Skywalker. The Rise of... Okay, yeah, the new... The, yeah, okay. yeah, as much as I enjoyed it... It's undeniable that uh, it is in some ways a refutation of The Last Jedi. I think that... I think... Do you I, disagree? I do disagree. And, yeah. and why? Because to me... Okay, so for example, like it was... There was a lot of fan service, and I know we've heard that term, and I don't use that as a pejorative, but I think in some cases the fan service was there... Uh, 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 practically to make up for some of the fan reaction to the last Jedi. And the, I mean, you'd have to tell me some specific. Uh, look, okay. So Luke, you know, Luke Skywalker and the lightsaber come, c- that's comes a to mind. Example, right. Right. So, okay. So, so that's actually a great example. Okay. Because, because so, so the last Jedi, we start with right where the force awakens left with Ray exactly. handing Luke lights. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Credits. And then we come back and he takes the lightsaber and toss over his shoulder. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Uh, that's the beginning of his arc in that film. And the whole point is by the end of the movie, he he realizes he was wrong. That's the whole point. That's why he does everything he does in that movie is Yoda saying, no, you made a mistake once. Get get off your butt. Mm. Failure, the best teacher failure is. And what does he do? He Think about this for a second. He force projects himself using the lightsaber that he threw over his shoulder. Right? So obviously the whole the whole point is where he starts in that movie is not where he ends. So where he's at when we find Force Ghost Luke in The Rise of Skywalker is reflective of where he was at at the end of his life. This is he- gonna get really geeky, but I-, I lost track of the lightsabers in in, in The Last Jedi because the, the lightsaber that he tosses over his shoulder That's the Anakin r- lightsaber, right? Which which uh, Ray takes with her and breaks apart. However, yes. on crate, it's a force projection where he's using that his original lightsaber. It's the blue lightsaber. So that it's so, so the lightsaber is a projection. Yes, it's not a literal lightsaber that he's holding right. in his hand but, but, on the island of crate. Uh, but if we're ta- if we're if or we're no, like, oh island. look how he Sorry. disrespect. Well, he doesn't care. Well, yeah, but he he recognizes the importance of specifically that symbol, right? And and so this is this is kind of my point. So when we see when we jump into the rise of Skywalker, and here's Luke's ghost, and here's here's Ray about to do what is she? I'm doing what you did, Master Luke, and he's like, no, I was wrong, mm. right? So that's reflective of where he's at at the end of the the Last Jedi, right? This is, I mean, the, the, it's yeah, obviously, if 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 the entirety of Luke's arc in the Last Jedi is toss lightsaber, get off my lawn, get out of here. Okay, maybe we've got something to talk about. But literally, the whole point, I mean, that's that's what The Last Jedi is about. It's about failure. It's about learning from failure. And I'm telling you, there is no more profound line to me in this new trilogy than the best failure teacher is. You okay, know? well, I'll, 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 I want to call your attention to another line in the, in the, that is now part of this trilogy, which is, you know, kill the past. Or forget your past, kill it if you have to. And who's right? saying that? The Kyle, bad guy. Right, the bad guy's saying this it. This is thesis, but, antithesis. Right? To me, on a meta level... It's Ryan Johnson saying it. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's and, not, and, and, you, and, and you know, because yeah, no, no. Here, I, hold on, I can yeah, speak to this. Sure, I have spoken to oh, Ryan Johnson. Sure. Okay, yeah, sure. And he said, "That's the bad guy." Okay, 
that's not what the movie's about. The movie is responding to what the bad guy is saying. He literally said this to my face. So I feel very yes, confident but, in that. But Luke's approach also, at least till the, till the very end, is also to forget the past. Right? He wants to burn down the temple. He wants to burn the temple with the text. And he's wrong. Right. That's the whole point. So it's Yoda. not just the bad guy. With all due respect to Ryan Johnson. But it, the, no, obviously. But the right. film is, a, is refuting that. Right, That's the whole point. Is Think about it. When when Luke shows up, he he makes himself look younger, right? So it's it's about preserving the legend. About he remember he says, "And I became Luke Skywalker, yeah, the right. legend." Mm-hmm. And then and, and what do you want me to do? Face off with the first order with my and what does he he does Laser exactly sword. that because the legend matters. It's important, right? Mm. It's worth preserving, and we see that play, play, pay off not only in that film but in the next film, and that's why it's so important. I think I think even when we uh, talk, forget Luke because ultimately he's a very small part of this current story. But when we look at the the story of Rey's lineage, everything that happens to her in the Last Jedi is it's paid off further in this current film. It's not it's not refuted. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll, I'll jump in. I, yeah. as somebody who. Um, like I said, was concerned after the last Jedi. I, I didn't hate it. I I, lo- I loved parts of it definitely, mm-hmm. but I don't. I actually don't think it was um, JJ stepping. You know, undoing mm. um, number one because he had to start writing the script before last Jedi came out. So it's not like he had to. He wrote it completely that, after. That is true, yeah. right? So that's number one. But I I actually agree with Zeki. It it did build on whatever last jedi had set up a bit now i my, my problem with last jedi is not much happened in the movie mm, um but push the but story, i do but i do feel on. that jj built on top of i do feel like he built on top of uh <clears throat> what last jedi was saying and it really nicely like without disrespecting it per- perfectly figured it out so i get like i said I, and i, I use the word meta but i mean to me like i i, I still and i and while i agree with the points that you made and i think in, in some ways you've kind of had have, have me rethinking some of my own assertions, but I think that on a meta level, also the reason I bring that up in terms of a refutation, as it were, uh, and maybe that was too strong of a word, but I think that Ryan Johnson and Abrams represent two very different approaches to filmmaking. I would agree with and that. And the reason, yeah. and, and so to I me, those are de- de- those are um, th- those are seen in their in, in the final product. And what I mean by that is. Ryan Johnson, as a filmmaker, loves to play with tropes. He loves to to sub, uh, to uh, 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 subvert subvert expectations, mm-hmm. subvert tropes, and 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 form. Whereas J- Abrams, almost to a you know almost to a critical extent, is is not maybe not slavish, but certainly loves to pay homage to his Jedi masters, as it were, and 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 those specifically being George Lucas and Steven Spielberg. Yeah. How many times did in interviews did did JJ say, and I can't wait to show you, uh, I can't wait for you to see it all. I was like, that was his line after every single interview. Um, <laughs> he knows how to. Uh, he, knows yeah, he knows how, how to, to work it exactly. Right? So, so, but, 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 yeah, so respond to the to, to what I said in terms of filmmaking and 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 how I, they get I, played. That gets played out. I don't think I don't think the rise of Skywalker is any more a refutation of the Empire Strikes Back of of. The Last Jedi, then Return of the Jedi is a refutation of The Empire Strikes Back. They are they are very different tonally, mm. but they each each trilogy ender effectively pays off the entry that came before it, and it builds on uh, the emotional depth that the that entry created. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I mean, I I, I would I agree think, with yeah, uh, just sorry. just yeah, just yeah, to complete yeah, that please. thought, I I think that. What the last Jedi did in terms of our main character, who is Rey, was dropped her to her lowest ebb, right? Sure. Which is, you've been l- waiting for your parents, right? You're nothing, right? And and so you can say, oh well, this one does whatever the hell that does. Well, this new one does, right? But uh, are we getting into spoilers? No, yeah, we, yeah. yeah, yeah so, okay, ahead. this next one is like, oh, it turns out you're actually the Emperor's granddaughter. And the reason I like that, and I don't think it, it it's a, it's a refutation of that. Is it's even worse yeah. than what uh, happens in the Last Jedi? It's like, no, no, you're not nothing. You're Hitler's granddaughter. Yeah. I'm like, oh God, can I be nothing, please? Yeah. <laughs> can I go back to being nobody? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's even worse. Sure. And and that particular revelation, 
on the one hand, you can wince at it and be like, oh my God, come on. Right. Are we doing this? Right? right. On the other hand, Return of the Jedi suddenly is like, oh, by the way, uh, you have a sister, and she's like the only other girl in these movies. <laughs> right? Interesting and, and analogy. So, and I always say yeah. that that's my bar. That's my bar mm. for coincidence in Star Wars. I'm like, if I'm okay with that, I, I got to be okay with most of these things mm. because that's the bar. Right? Interesting. Honestly, Rey being the Emperor's granddaughter is no more absurd than Return of the Jedi suddenly revealing that Luke and Leia are brother and sister. And that's Twins we just, at that. At the, yeah, and we, we take it for granted now because it's baked into the cake, right? Uh, but at, the, at, at that time, yeah. and I can't speak to this because I was a little kid, but certainly people who I know who are older than me were like, what? Yeah. yeah. Right? I think that was my and, reaction. And and that's exactly my point. And this this goes to what I was saying. I had a flashback saying. to the kiss on Empire Strikes Back. Hey, who like, didn't? You. And Luke is like, oh, well, was, you know, they, they love each other. They didn't know. They didn't know. That's why they kissed. And it's like, yeah, but if you knew, And we'll talk they about awkward kissed. kisses in a second. Sorry. That's true. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> right. uh, There's but, at least two in this movie. But, you yeah. know, this is my point, right? Yeah. I think this is what makes Star Wars so unique. Mm. We all, you, uh, we three. We had a very specific experience with this franchise that's unique uh, uh, to our generation. Okay. And then the kids who watched the prequels, then interf- who grew up with the prequels, interfaced with those original films in a very different way. Okay. And now we've got 20 years later, this next batch of movies that people who are growing up with these are going to interface with those in a different way. And and what other series is like this where you've got 40 years worth of story spread over nine movies and different generations interpret them differently, react in differently, uh, respond to different entries yeah. differently. It's completely unique. And and you can, Omar, you can speak, well, you, you all can because you've watched these with your kids, you know? Yeah. Certainly for me, uh, and I just did this uh, leading up to this, you know, my kids are Star Wars fans anyway, but we watched every single movie in chronological order, including Rogue One and Solo. And so by the time we get to the, the Rise of Skywalker, for them it's like it all just fits together. And there's no contradictions and gaps in the story. There's nothing. Everything makes sense because the stuff that doesn't make sense, they can just talk through and come up with their own explanations for. And that's part of the experience. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have two girls. Yeah. And they absolutely re- relate to Ray more than any other character. Oh, yeah, sure. And in fact, this is kind of funny. I've I've been, you know, slowly kind of pushing Star Wars on them for like <laughs> as long as I can remember. Uh, and I've Guilty. never really had true success. But but uh, and I'll, I I hopefully won't forget this. But after um, the movie, the second viewing, I took my kids. Uh, the movie ended, and my seven year old looks over to me and go, goes, "I love Star Wars now," and that just absolutely made made the whole thing worth it for me. Um, <laughs> and it's true, like original trilogy, she was like, eh, "It's fine, it's cool," you know, it's dad, what's what dad likes prequels you know whatever we made through she the funny thing is she was beaming uh from ear to ear when when, when jar jar came yeah, on and sure. that also That's many kids that mm-hmm. also reminded me that you know it is for kids but yeah she said i love star wars now and i go okay hey when finally there you, you know, go it was, yeah. the, it was the sequel trilogy that did it no it's interesting because you know one of the points that i was going to talk about because i knew we were going to have this conversation about whether or not this is a reputation of, uh, you know, is this Abrams kind of, you know, making this a sequel to, you know, The Force Awakens more than The Last Jedi. And to your question earlier at the outset, Omer, about why this is being even discussed on a Muslim podcast, I couldn't help myself but think of sort of the kind of uh, centuries old debate among Muslims about the role of tradition versus, um, you know, uh, how or how slavish should we be to tradition versus kind of striking out on our own modernity, right? The idea of taqlid versus ijtihad, right? Which is this notion of sanad being so important and chain of transmission and where you learn your knowledge from and, you know, where you have the ability to even engage in the tradition comes from being, um, you know, a student of so on, who then in turn is a student of so on. But, uh, and so to me, by analogy, it was sort of like Ryan Johnson making the argument that, you know what, you know, the force is now democratized. Everybody, it's not limited to a bloodline. It's not limited to a chain of transmission. Um, and, and and that was the argument that uh, Johnson was making. Whereas I think Abrams, 
to to not only with regards to his own sort of the way he likes to pay homage and tribute to his Jedi masters is much more in the other camp, which is that we should carry on tradition. We should, you know, tradition is important. And so I think that's where I was going to try to make, try to make some sort well, of an I, analogy. I love that. I could, what you, the thing you just mentioned, I think is just the heart that could be the, the rest of this podcast. This is an awesome topic. I, I actually love uh, how JJ did it. Cause I think he did it perfectly right by keeping the connectivity between the generations so there was a handoff. And one uh-huh. thing this movie did amazing was use the original trilogy characters. Each one of them, Leia, Han, and Luke, each one was pivotal. Lando. To, uh, and Lando, actually, yeah. But even even Han, right, with, with Kylo, mm-hmm. was pivotal for Ben Ben and Rey to be successful in the end. In this one. Very interesting. Mo- really pivotal, right? That's so they so really were key in this movie. And I thought they were handled amazingly. Mm. And at the same time, she ended up not being blood blood relative but she she kept the the isna the fuel right? right so she he he actually he actually played that really nicely mm, and one thing i want to say i had this on my list of mental mental notes and things one thing i loved um that's the thing that i loved and you know uh, a lot in this movie among a couple other things was the use of the original trilogy characters mm. i was really like feeling after the first two movies i'm like i didn't get the original trilogy characters but after watching this one i felt satisfied because leia was critical uh han was that was an awesome scene i loved it with with han coming back probably my favorite one of my favorite scenes in the movie certainly yeah and then luke even his luke's thing like she would not have gotten yeah uh, she would have been stuck and he's he's the one who got got the got the the tie fighter got the lightsaber yeah right the x-wing the the uh the and the lightsaber and right and 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 his sister's yeah yeah exactly right so so it wasn't just them showing up they were they're important to the story Mm. and then the other thing i thought about kind of related to that was which was how the original trilogy characters the three they were core to both the resolution the first time and the resolution the second time Mm. so it's a nice mirror right if you think about it uh return of the jedi was the first time the emperor was defeated it was leia luke and and, uh and han and this one they they were critical to get the new characters to defeat the emperor so i love how that was that played out and and yet and and just to just to uh jump off of a point you're making i think uh, what's very clear, and I think you know, honestly, I think this was something that many fans have had a hard time grappling with when it comes to this trilogy, which is it's not about those original characters, you know. And I, you know, certainly for me, I've said this before, but either on this show or the other one, but uh, about halfway through Last Jedi, I was like, oh, this is Girl Meets World. Uh, this trilogy, and by way of uh, by way of analogy, you know, I loved the show Boy Meets World when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, I loved it. Con- and confessions. Then, oh yeah, yeah I uh, no confessions. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it, right? <laughs> Unabashedly, and and just like he's proud of being a, da- a fan of Dallas. I love yeah. Dallas. <laughs> I loved the new Dallas. I could m- make the same analogy actually. But anyway, so so Boy Meets World. Uh, a couple of years ago, they were like, oh, we're gonna. They're doing a sequel to. Boy Meets World called Girl Meets World, and it's going to be all about uh, Corey and Topanga's daughter and her adventures in school. Whatever, I was like, "Oh, Boy Meets World is great!" And then, and then I watched the first episode of Girl Meets World, and I'm watching Corey and Topanga, and they're like, "All right, honey, have a good time." And then we follow the daughter, and I'm like, "Wait, I, what? Are, what are Corey and Topanga doing?" You know, yeah. I'm like, well, they're, and they're in the other room doing something, but we're following the kid. And I was like, "Oh, wait, this show is named at me. Like, I'm not the main audience, you know." And so for me, the, a little bit of that's what I realized during Last Jedi. I was like. It wasn't so much this isn't aimed at me, but I was like, this isn't about those characters. And I just, that's me. That's my set of expectations. So with this one, uh, it really focused in on the new characters in a way where the the original characters had their part to play. But like Luke is in it for like a scene, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So he's Alec Guinness in Return of the Jedi. He shows up. He's like, hey, the certain point of view. He even does the certain point of view thing. He does. He sits down on a rock, which like ghosts shouldn't be able to do, but whatever. Um, and then, you know, he does a little thing and that's it, right? And and that's, I think there that, that too reveals something that's kind of special about this series when viewed through the nine part prism, which is characters just come and go. You know, if you watch them in number order, you love Obi-Wan Kenobi. He leaves the playing field after number four, 
as a as an active ingredient. You know, you love Han Solo, he leaves the playing field after number seven. You know what I mean? It's like that's life. I, th- that's I, think, life. You're, I think you're 100 percent right. I think myself and a lot of fans had, had a hard time with that because we yeah. had the mm-hmm. the stories of, of, of the of the characters yeah. after Return of the we Jedi. We had 30 Internet. years of those characters being the focus of Star Wars. I, I actually didn't even fully accept that until yeah. about an hour into The Rise of Skywalker where, really? where there's no Luke <laughs> and I'm like, he's really not going to be in this movie but you know what? I'm still loving this movie and the, <laughs> the second thing and maybe we should talk about it. The second thing I loved about things we loved about the movie or sure. didn't like. The second thing I loved about it, uh, aside from use of the original trilogy characters, was I loved, I, I actually fell in love with the new characters. Like, huh. I really want to see episode 10 now with Ray, Finn, and Poe, and yeah. I don't even care about, I don't need to see Luke and Leia yeah. on anymore. It's like, true. I want to see episode 10 no. with Ray, Finn. I actually fell in love with the characters in this movie. Yeah. Well, no. and that's an interesting point you made make about falling in love with these characters in this movie hmm. because to me in contradiction like in, in in contradiction to or or uh like go, if you if we, if we if we look at it by way of comparison to the original trilogy you fall in love with those three char- the, like the three main leads from the very beginning from the jump and we see their chemistry and their relation their interrelationship from the jump whereas i think that in this in this trilogy right you don't see so much of that. In fact, in 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 in, in 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 you know, for most of the second movie, they're all they're, they're all separated. Yeah. So if if I can maybe tweak yeah. what you were saying, Omar, for, for just speaking of me personally, I I was on board with these characters from the beginning. However, this one made me fall in love with their relationship. See, there you go. Mm-hmm. There and and. I uh, I think in terms of things the last Jedi did wrong, right? Uh, when you have two of our three main characters literally meet for the first time at the end of movie two, and you're referring to Poe and and and, yeah. uh, and Ray, hey, exactly. Uh, that's uh, yeah, yeah, that's structurally that's a problem. However, however, let me say this: a lot of the stuff that gets sort of pawned off on uh, the Last Jedi is stuff that JJ put in place with force awakens like that was something i you know jj abrams had no intention of coming back yeah, let's yeah, remember yeah, right. that so yeah. i think he did a little hey let's just do this and yeah. let's see what they come up with i think i think in terms of setting up the connection between poe and ray well that should have been hap- that should have happened at the end of force awakens uh, in terms of uh, why is luke on that I- island well ryan johnson put him there jj did you know yeah. so so that that's sort of you know what i mean like jj gets to to have the credit and the debit, because yeah. some of the structural flaws in this trilogy are because of what he did in, in The Force Awakens. And because I love The Rise of Skywalker, I can kind of look back and go, okay, it's all accepted. Yeah, but you totally. know what happened, right? They, they they saw George Lucas's script. They didn't like it, Disney being. Disney, yeah. Kathleen Kennedy, Bob Iger, whoever. They didn't, and then they had, clock is ticking. Yeah. And they got a, they, had, they had pre-announced uh, May 2015, episode seven's coming out, pre-announced it. And the clock's ticking, and they basically had to come up with something. Then they delayed it to December. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but right. yeah, there there's an immense amount of pressure. Yeah, I, I, I didn't. I, I mean, I was I was kind of waiting to get into this, but I think it's in, you know since we are talking about it, I think another thing that is for me at least, as much as again, I enjoyed each of the installments for their own reasons, and and for and for and for various or aspects of it or parts of all three of the movies really speak to me and really resonated. However, I think what was what is also demonstrably true with the new trilogy is that it lacked a sort of creative vision or a roadmap. Of course, yeah. yeah. Right? I mean, you know, if we're, if I'm if I'm going to compare this to another Disney property, I'll um, you know, or, and I'm speaking I'm speaking specifically about Marvel, Kathleen Kennedy, I think, you know, bears some responsibility for not being the Kevin Feige of this universe. Mm-hmm. But right. but I agree with you. But which you is, know, which is what, what? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. But like, no. because what 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 Marvel was able to do over the course of eleven movie. I'm sorry, eleven years and twenty two movies. In spite of the fact that you had different creatives coming in, and you know, taking the helm of those movies. In some cases, of course, you had repeats. But by and large, you had various cooks who would come in, add their ingredients, and leave. Um, in this case, you know, or or in, in the case of Marvel, you still had this sort of creative, you know, omnipresence of Kevin Feige. And here, you didn't have that. And so, you know, and it, I think if you had that, I think Abrams doing what he did at the end of Force Awakens, uh, 
and then Ryan Johnson doing what he did, there would have been at least sort of a creative, there would have been some creative control. And I think that a roadmap or the, or the lack thereof in this case is to me kind of apparent. And, 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 and to me, no bigger demonstration of that is than the return of Palpatine. Sure. Yeah. Because it was like, he did away with Snope, Ryan Johnson, I mean, in the end of, or in, 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 in The Last Jedi. Um, and so where do you go from there? Who's the big baddie? And, you know, so for me to be convinced of this idea that it was always Palpatine and it was always going to be Palpatine yeah. returning right. is a bridge too far. And I don't think even it's like Abrams, poetry. <laughs> well, it itself. I'm saying even Abrams can't convince me of that, of where things left off, even with The Force Awakens, because there's no hint or clue. Of Palpatine's presence, and, and you know what's interesting? This is, is that the mystery. Sorry, is that the mystery box that people refer to when they yeah. talk about Abrams? Yeah, he's Mister Mystery Box. Yes. yes so, right. what is that? It's just it's it's ooh, you got to keep watching to see what's in the hatch or ah, what's in you know right. And and that's this is the fundamental problem with the Force Awakens, which is a movie I, I I'm fine with, but Me too. it's it's like it's like it's like one third of a movie, and I don't mean one third of a trilogy i mean it's one third of a movie because mm -hmm. where that movie ends should be like end of act one because it's all set up like notwithstanding obviously we got the stuff with star killer base but i mean thematically uh in terms of where the characters are you know what i mean that it's i and you know this is this is like a structural problem with this trilogy is mm -hmm. they didn't accomplish what they needed to do in the first movie so that's right? right so that's why we're here at part three, and it's like, oh, and by the way, this this guy's been behind it all. Now, just to be clear, honestly, we know that he just kind of, they pulled it out of the sky. Totally. I think, personally, it works. I, I have no problem buying it as like, oh, okay. Like, that's, I don't know, that's me. You, the movie starts, you're like, hey, I've been behind it all. I'm I'm sitting there, I'm like, all right. I accepted Leia and Luke as brother and sister. This is nothing, you know. Right. Uh, and I think for the most part, it can fit. It you you can make the pieces fit, and so that's I'm okay with that. Right. But yeah, to your point, like I, I, you know, this is something I've said on Twitter. I think that for all the criticism that George Lucas came under for whatever happened at the prequels, I think Disney did him dirty because they bought his studio they bought his treatment and he was under some impression that they would be working off of his treatment and they're like here you go thanks george let me read that okay we're not gonna do that anymore they you know yeah. and and i think you know he remember he was kind of he was upset for a little i mean he called them white, white slavers slavers generally you don't call people you like white slavers i don't generally know especially people who write you a four billion dollar check generally speaking yeah so so to me i'm like Say what you want about George Lucas's vision on the prequels; they are uniquely George Lucas. Yeah, and you watch yeah. those three movies, and you're like, "This is filtered through one man's, you know, interpretation," and and they are uniquely him. And I'm like, uh, I, I refuse to believe that whatever he had in those in his treatment could not have been filtered through a prism of another film of a J.J. Abrams of a Ryan Johnson of whoever, and ended and we would have ended up with something that was a very potent synthesis of his ideas and somebody else's craft. Mm, I like that. Ideas right? versus craft. Well, I mean, look, yeah. at, you know, to that point, look at Rages of the Lost Ark. George Lucas's idea, Steven Spielberg's craft, and you end up with this amazing experience. The Empire Strikes Back, if we're still talking about Star Wars. You know, so I, I refuse to believe that his idea was that bad. <laughs> Grant is like, yeah. oh, history of midichlorians or whatever. I, you know, even, even that, I'm like, now in hindsight, I'm like, I would love to know I am curious. What, he thinks, what, what is that? I'm, I'm super curious. I'm interested, right? Yeah. And I say this as somebody who likes this neutrality just fine. So this is more like observation rather than critique. But yeah, it's it's clear that they were making it up as they went. Yeah. But my counterpoint to that is, yeah, but they did that with the original trilogy too. They were making that up as they went too. You, you, Lord George Lucas didn't have it all planned out. That's so, true. And, and here's the other th consideration. And I can say this now that it's all done, and I liked it. Uh, the final product, I'm very happy with. I lo like, I love love the final 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 product. So I can say this. Um, but the lands, the media landscape has changed mm. so much in the and past not for the better. Or in the past ten years, so so just because Feige did it doesn't mean, like it. That concept of having a mapped out ten arcs, ten movie um, arc, that 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 didn't exist. So they Kathleen Kennedy, I think, was making 
the new sequel trilogy the way tr- movies have traditionally been made, which is one at a time. Mm. Just because Feige did it and we now take it for granted, now everybody's trying to do it, doesn't mean that um, that concept in 2012, 13 was even there. It was like, it was it was really, mar- and even Marvel, it was lightning in a bottle, right? Is that the expression? Um, it just it just worked out. And, and yes. now they're rolling, they're going all in on it. But they got there's a few lucky turns. Well, to there. me, that lightning in a bottle is is comp- is comparable to the original trilogy, right? Things worked, even though you know on paper these things weren't supposed to work. Yeah, they worked, right? And then the, with Marvel, you're saying? No, I'm saying with the original trilogy, oh, okay. a la Mar- Marvel, yeah. Yeah. like where you had you know this this uh, it was this passion project of George Lucas's, which was the original movie that became this huge blockbuster. And then he had to craft a three part movie out of it or a three part story narrative. And, and he did so, and he had different directives and you had people ad libbing lines like on, you know, Harrison Ford and it all worked. It all worked somehow. And so that to me was kind of lightning in the bottle. And, and yet, you know, the, the, the amusing thing is like the critique now is like, oh, Disney, they've just m- yeah. merchandised it and they're just out to make toys and b- make money off of merchandise. And I'm like, y'all used to say the same stuff about George Lucas. Basically everything after the everything after the Empire Strikes Back was oh George Lucas he used to be like this now he's just in it for the money yeah. and he's just this and he's just selling toys from Return of the Jedi through every single one of the prequels and I'm like we just forget you know it's it's that's look it <laughs> it's yeah it, it's it's this is this is one of those franchises and by the way Marvel's gonna end up here it's gonna happen to Marvel because Marvel is new. Mm-hmm. It's about eleven years. Give it time it, for for the the original fan base to calcify and become terrible, yeah. be, and become gatekeepers. I predict it's it all, starts happening with Black Widow. I th- I think. Oh yeah, it's going to start not, happening. Yeah. Black Widow. Uh, it's it's actually already started happening because of some of the reaction to Captain Marvel. Uh, on the internet, See, exactly because you you've got so, the insult boys and whatever. Yeah, you know, so, exactly. So, so this it's like that's that's the next episode of Diffuse Congruence. <laughs> that'd be, I'm, 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 that sounds like an interesting. One. Um, I I think Kathleen Kennedy, right? It takes a lot of grief for yeah. not being Kevin Feige, right? right? And I think, I think, I think part of this, and obviously there's no one in this room, but there, there's a heavy sexism Mm. component there which is let's just set that to one side the reality is kathleen kennedy has a career producing some of the biggest hit movies of all time that's right and her 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 bona fides as a producer are not in question but her entire approach is bring on the creative and uh uh allow their vision to Mm. emerge do do what you need to as a producer to to let the filmmaker do what they're going to do that's fascinating you know, and so, so that, a different. So comparing her to Kevin Feige is like me trying to compare Ryan Johnson to Abrams, right? Yes, in the sense I, that these are two different approaches yeah. to not only filmmaking in the case of the directors, but in this case to you know being sort of the creative in charge. And and to that point, I mean, Kathleen Kennedy didn't just get the job out of like a Willy Wonka bar. I mean, George Lucas picked her right so right. so whatever she's doing is a reflection of his wishes right so I, all of this stuff i mean there there are complexities to all of was this. that part of the deal or did that precede the deal he, with disney he he made her, president. made her president that's right i thought so. and then he sold the company right. and that was by design he did that deliberately you know what you know what else is there's a scarcity in star wars yeah where, yes, where right. you don't get any product for a while and when you get it the anticipation is really built up and you want it to be perfect, right? You want it to make you feel how it made you feel last time yeah. or the first time, right? Mm, yeah. Uh, but, but with Marvel, there's a new movie coming out reg- like every quarter, right? Uh, there's and it's gonna be more. They're gonna up it to like three movie, four movies, and four three movies or four shows. That you, so the volume, so you can, you know, I I didn't love every single Marvel movie. There's some I love, some I like. Um, but basically you watch it and you're like, okay, what's next, right? Here with, with Last Jedi or, or whatever it is, you have to wait, right? Mm. And I, so I think with, Mar- with, uh, with Star Wars, I think as they start putting out more TV content, yeah, um, you've already seen that with Mandalorian. People are less judgy, yeah. less cri- critical because, okay, I didn't love episodes three and four of The Mandalorian, but six was awesome, right? So there's a bit of that forgiveness uh, flavor, of the, flavor of the month type thing, right? Mm. It's, you know, it's, 
it's when we when we look at people's affinity for for pop culture specifically, it's uh, it's worth recognizing how thin a line there is between love and hate because uh, it's just people turn, man. People are so passionate, and then they just turn like on a dime, and they just break bad you know i i just just uh the other week i somebody pointed this out to me online there was a there was a message board that i used to frequent and somebody was very critical of the disney star wars films which of course you're entitled to be but this was like they typed up like a this just page long i mean it was like on and manifesto on. And it manifesto. was it was like unabomber-esque yeah. and so out of curiosity I was like, man, this is a long thing. So I, I copied the whole thing and I pasted it into Google Docs. And it was eight pages long, 4,100 words. Wow. About how much they hate Disney's Star Wars. And I'm like, how, what is it like to have that much hate for this thing? Like That much like, time. That and much, that much time. I was going to say. I, mean, it all, I, it all I, I envy that. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I don't, I can't even write. I get paid to write. That's I can't true. do that much, yeah. you know? Yeah, I think you more so than the two that's of us. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, 4,000 words, that's like a, that's like a, a master's thesis, you know? That's it's hilarious. And it's, and my point is this, like, the, it's, this, Star Wars is one of those franchises that tends to bring this out because people have this very personal affinity for it, right? Yeah, it's like, the, this, uh, this was how I, uh, you know, engaged, engaged, in engaged it, yeah. right? And and therefore, this is how it's supposed to be, quote unquote, supposed to be. Yeah. And so, in a very broader sense, uh, the the negative side of this discussion that we're having, you know, it's it it's indicative of sort of gatekeeper culture, mm -hmm. where oh, you're you're the wrong kind of fan, you're wrong. And so, so to your point, just tying it all back, you know, your daughters look at Ray and they're like, wow, mm -hmm. Ray. And yet, what was the as soon as this series started? Oh, what a Mary Sue. Mary Sue, right? Which is which for those of you who don't know, like that's a pejorative term for a character who is deemed as like perfect or overpowered or whatever. And and I you know, I've I've been having this discussion for four years now. Like, well, she's no more overpowered or perfect than Luke or or Anakin, the previous leads in this series. Yeah. Well, I will say something about about Abrams, uh, you know, in terms of uh, course correcting or not. One thing he didn't listen to the fan base about or the, the kind of reaction that, you know, came right after Force Awakens, which was this idea of Mary Sue. Because yeah. in this movie, he kind of takes it up a notch, yeah. several notches in terms of Ray's abilities. But, but he explained it. Yeah, of course. Through through very through one of my favorite scenes, which was the yes. force lightning in the well, in, and in I'm the glad desert. you go, I'm glad you go there because I think we we we, we kind of you know like I almost feel like we like we, we 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 take one move like one step into talking about Rise of Skywalker and then we take two steps in back and then we start talking about sort of the franchise and Star yeah. Wars. So yeah, why let's don't talk, we let's talk yeah, about what we liked and what we didn't exactly, like exactly exactly. So, so I, I, I love so I, I've, I've already talked about and we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I did love. I have to say, I loved everything between Kylo and Rey. Yes. I loved I, it. I, I, I loved everything agree. but one. <laughs> I didn't mind that. The end, the kiss? You're yeah. talking about the kiss? I yeah. didn't mind it. I, 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 I could have done without that. Me too. And I don't know why. I just, Some, somebody I said something. I, this is, this like is, it wasn't a deal breaker for me, but I could have done without it. Some, somebody says, I read somewhere, like, hey, if somebody just brought you back to life, you are gonna, you might give them a kiss, right? Sure, sure. <laughs> and I'm not, read, I'm not even one to like, read more into it. It, it could be... Uh, you know, a, a platonic kiss. I mean, yeah. so I'm not even talking about the romance element. And of actually, it. that's what J that's what JJ said. He said sure. it's, oh, okay. it has a bit of. It's not. It's not. It's not all about that. He yeah. said it's. It's uh, more spiritual. The way he there's some quotes about him saying that it wasn't. It wasn't purely romantic. It was there was a spiritual uh, right. kiss there. Well, whether it's, it's it's the Kylo Ren or and Ray kiss, or it's the um, I know we, we we like we have a same sex kiss in the movie mm, as well, yeah. which is you know it, it's it's elicited some responses in the fan base. But I'm like, look, man, if there's one thing we've come to expect from a Star Wars franchise is awkward kisses. So yeah. <laughs> you know, if we can get over a brother and sister kissing each other, even uh, knowingly or you know, uh, not knowing that they were brother and sister, we can I think kind of get over the other two things. But but in terms of in terms of right. in terms of their dynamic, the acting was amazing. Amazing. And yes. then the scenes where they were like, what is it? Face FaceTiming, Face Skype? What's the force, force time? I've heard force, force timing. I've heard force, force skyping. skyping right? right, right, right. Those oh, were or, amazing I scenes. I mean, and if anything, one thing, like again, we talk about the things that that Abrams ran with with regards to what what what, what was 
developed in The Last Jedi is certainly this relationship Mm -hmm. and their ability to connect with one another. In fact, you know, something that's teased in The Last Jedi, which is that it's also a physical, in some ways, physical connection because Mm -hmm. there's that scene where Kylo, he looks at his gloves in, um, Kylo Ren looks at his gloves in The Last Jedi and they're more, they're, they're like, Water droplets, the yeah. rain, because yeah. it's raining yes. or right on on the island. And they did it twice in this movie. They did and it in with... this movie. I'm saying he did, they, they just take it further. Yeah. where Kylo literally three, three is times. able three to times. grab. Yeah, is literally able to grab something from Ray's person. Um, and then of course Ray is able to do that w- with the helmet, right? With the, like, yes. the thing, the helmet drops on. Yeah, but then in the end they use it. That's yes. how she helped. She helped which him. Was right? a it was great awesome. moment, which was a great moment. Yeah, yeah, where where she force projects. I guess, or transfers. Yeah. So, so let's talk about so okay, any, any other any other thoughts about the movie, whether you liked or hate it, and then let's talk about our rankings of, of the overall sure, movie. Sure. Uh, I, another thing I really loved about about this movie, sorry, is that um, is is three PO. We talk about classic characters, and and you know George Lucas always sort of said that the droids were the one consistent, you know, sort of or the two consistent in this case, R two D two and C three PO throughout all of the various trilogies. I really liked. What they did mm-hmm. with 3PO here. I yeah. mean, in fact, I would argue that they probably did more with 3PO than he's ever, that they've done with in the past. Certainly since uh, The Emperor Strikes Back, you know, in terms of having like um, an actual presence in the story. What does he do in Return? I mean, uh, Empire Strikes Back. I mean, he's there for a big chunk of it and he, you know, oh, right. he's, he's, he's not sort of a, mm-hmm. you know, I think in Return of the Jedi, he's sort of a little bit at the end. But, you know, I mean, yeah. I think um, in terms of being, uh, an engine of driving the plot there forward, arguably since first time since the New Hope. Mm-hmm, you know? mm-hmm. that, and, and in terms of side I, characters, Chewbacca got his due as well. And I love that. Uh, and in fact, I, I think I think another example of sort of Abrams listening to the fans. You know, Chewie has a reaction to Leia's death. Right. Remember, yeah. one of the critics well, critiques yeah, was Chewie and and Leia not having a moment right after right. Han's death. Right. When we see the two of them again, right. Um, it literally, like Chewie walks right past her, and then right. she goes right to Ray. So in this movie, I, I remember that, and it was such a visceral reaction. Right. You can. I mean, Chewie mm-hmm. just when when Leia, I forget if it's at her physical death or her, when she disappears. I no, no. It's it when they come back. When the Millennium Falcon comes back and they're like, Leia's oh, yeah. gone. That's right. That's right. Right. So that, I, I think that was beautiful too. And you're right. They did do a lot with Chewie. And there's even that little where you think he's gone and he's not really gone. Mm-hmm. Right. We should uh, yeah. talk, speaking of Leia, we should talk about yes. her integration into the story. Yeah. Which, what do we feel about that? I mean, I, I liked it. It was fine. It was, it worked. And I liked how, I, I like, I love the, the, it's like you do the impression, the poetry no, of, poetry. of uh, <laughs> how she died in this in a, in a similar way as Luke. Obviously, she wasn't as powerful. Him. She couldn't have a whole lightsaber battle projecting. Yeah, but she projected herself to her son. Mm-hmm. That was well. Nice. She she does more. See, this is interesting because because that scene in particular, right? Um, she's she, it's about more than her projecting. That herself. scene, sorry, is so just so powerful on so many levels. First of all, visually, yeah. I mean, the fight scene right. on that. On the on the ruins of the Death Star. Oh yeah, with I mean, the it's, waves crashing. It's, it's, it, I mean, it's it's about it, it's a yeah. metaphor for oh. rebirth and all you know, and it's an exact uh, elemental opposite of Revenge oh, yeah, of the elemental. Sith. Elemental, I like that. Yeah, right. You got fire and oh. Revenge of the Sith. I never thought about the here. fire and the water and the right. cinematography. And oh. Again, again, think Top about it. Notch. Both both signify rebirth, fire and water. Anakin is reborn on Mustafar. Ben is reborn. On on the, this moon of Endor, but both right? uh, Barbez and I are doing the silent, the silent impressed nod with that analogy. <laughs> That's right. Like, this mm-hmm. is like, right, uh, yeah. and, and this is why Zucky gets all the money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> tell 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 him her sister. That. <laughs> it's my wife. Um, right. No, but but uh, that Leia is not just force projecting herself. Right. This is the key thing. She she tethers her soul to him to cleanse the dark side wow. out of him. Okay, and right. we know this. Because uh, when Ben dies at the end, that's when Leia's body disappears, right? So, so something very interesting happening because because Ray and and Ben are fighting. Leia essentially uses the last of energy yeah. to to essentially pull the dark side out of him. Ray, not realizing that, stabs him. She kills him dead. Mm-hmm. He he's seconds away from dying. And then right. what does she do? She heal, so she heals his body. Leia heals his soul. 
right? Well, it's funny because right, and then right as she, as soon as she strikes him, she even says she Leia. Realizes. Yeah, she, so realizes she realizes the mistake she's because made. she feels Leia. Yeah. Dying yes. essentially. So now, now the interesting thing here is that what they've point. said. What they said when the whole trilogy started, they're like, number three is going to be like the Leia movie, right? Mm. And then of course, Carrie, Carrie Fisher, Fisher passes away. Right. So you've got a bunch of bad options, right? And and I, you know, I said in my review, I was like, they couldn't do like a poochy thing. Like, by the way, Leia died on her way back to the home planet. Anyway, you know, like you get, you can't not have her in the movie for the uninitiated, and maybe even for Omar Poochie is a Simpsons reference. Ah, uh, okay. okay, yeah, <laughs> okay. I, I am outnumbered uh, between the two of you and my wife. Uh, <laughs> right, yeah, right. I, uh, so, so it's again, and you couldn't recast. So you've got. Let's work with what we have. Yeah. How, however, and I'm very curious how this is going to appear decades from now, mm. more or less obvious. But uh, I think I said this on my other podcast. She seems like a, like a non playable character in a video game. Yes, that's a great analogy. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I, I I felt the same way. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I mean, you can't do anything about it. She's so a cutscene. She's right. Yeah. You, and it, so it's not a critique no, per se because no. it's just well, but that's definitely what it felt like because certainly. she's saying certain pre-programmed things and yeah. and you know the characters have to respond based on whatever's written right so mm-hmm. so I'm watching and I'm a little bit like what was the what was she actually saying there like what's the act, you know yeah but you know great. my other observation is in this movie more so than other Star Wars movies the more you talk about it I feel like there's layers and that and, and it, that maybe yeah. from the, the how dense it is there's stuff that I'm realizing more and more. Right. Um, versus some of the other ones are kind of a th- simple three act structure, right? Mm. Well, and and you know, going going back to what we were talking about earlier, Please, I think no, I because I like your yeah. Finish your point about like cleansing Ben Solo. I I think that's so important, right? Because because to me, um, the, the idea that Leia touched Ben's soul mm-hmm. is what to me anyway makes more sense of of him having his conversation with his father. It's it's like his his mind is open to that memory to, to that, that memory. memory because Han is not a force. Han ghost. is not a force ghost. That's he's, right, and they say specifically he, they he do. has a memory. But it's that that uh, the uh, the it it brings to the fore his regret and his desire to re to make the right choice this time. That's right. right. That's right. And and I'll tell you, man, uh, this is this is the moment I got misty eyed in that. Uh, in this film is when he just says dad yeah and and what i love is he doesn't say anything and han says i know a call back to so we know what's unsaid i love you that's right right oh like, that's awesome that, yeah, and it's awesome. a callback to I empire heard, yeah yeah yeah. i heard the something ad- about a callback but i never well, really fully thought it's about the it. famous ad lib that that uh right that that that, that harrison ford does nice, which is nice. yeah the, the line was that's dad right Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah, I know. that's awesome. Right. I, I'm, I'm glad was... I had my IMAX glasses on uh, or 3D glasses on at that time. But and, no, that and, was and, a yeah, great you know, scene. It was a great I, scene. I watched Force Awakens in you know when it came out, and I'm like, as soon as he does a shish kebab to Han Solo, I'm like, this guy needs to die. Yes, I hate him. I can't stand him. That's right. No redemption. And then uh, you know halfway through this movie, I'm like. Come on, Ben. <laughs> Come on, man. You can do it. Oh, Adam that's, Driver. Adam Driver. Yeah, I mean, he, right. the, when yeah. he was uh, almost killed by Ray, right? Yes. Or, the acting where he's just sitting there mm-hmm. and the rain mm-hmm. and his hair is wet. And oh. he's not like overacting, no. but he's got this like look on his face. Yes. It mm-hmm. was amazing acting. And there's something in his performance where like to your point about how by the end of the movie, you're like rooting for him, which you've never done up until this point in any of the movies yeah. is, is, is I think not only a testament to the writing and to where they took the character, but also to Adam driver's performance, yeah. because there's something different where he, when he plays Ben solo, and I don't think I'm just reading into it because of the create of the narrative choices, but I think there's a performance difference in terms of the, what he, what, what he brings to the character when he's playing Ben solo versus Kylo Ren. Yeah, even no, unmasked. I agree. no, I, even, I absolutely agree. Yeah, yeah, even unmasked or unhelmeted or whatever. And, um, and just, Kylo Ren. And, and one last point about no. about the battle, real quick. That's the last lightsaber duel in this saga. Which between, oh yeah between that's Ray right. and, and and it's like halfway through the movie. Mm-hmm. It's kind mm, of interesting. That's a great point. Yeah. But and, and to your point about you're right because the moment that he kills his father, right, and he kills not only his father but a beloved character like Han Solo, 
to me, the door is a retribution or the door, sorry, the, yeah, the uh, redemption. redemption, sorry. Yeah. The doors to redemption were closed off. Yeah. And I like how they, they redeemed him and, and there was some atonement, but he also doesn't live on to, you know what it's I mean? Just like so, his grandpa, yeah, right? Just like his grandpa. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah. I've said this all the time. I'm like, uh, you know, uh, George Lucas knowing where uh, Anakin's story ends up, you'd think when he made the prequels, he wouldn't be like, let's now show him about to murder children. And let's find the cutest darn kid we can find who's about to get just shanked by a laser beam. You know, like, because because when you think about it, what do we do, the, Mr. Skywalker? Yeah, it's, right, right. <laughs> Mouse like, Master Skywalker. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, you shouldn't get to come back from that. That's awful. And it's because it's just like a room full of dead yeah. children. It's terrible, right. right? Killing sand people or whatever, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, actually, yeah, you know, yeah. even the separatists. Eh, yeah. <laughs> but joking aside, like, I, I mean, bring back to the theme of us, like, yeah. we do believe in, oh. like, instant forgiveness, mm, right? Mm. Um, that's true. With no... You don't need a priest or nothing. Yeah, you just yeah. if you. you That's can actually free- a fascinating point because I thought of that when we were talking when I was writing down even the notes for the show and I was writing this idea of like his atonement and his redemption. I was thinking about that. You you're absolutely right. Like, um, uh, there's the hadith um, of the prophet where he says, like, your verily your actions are but are, are by your last actions. Hmm. Um, in the like your actions are judged by the last of your actions, right? We often hear the hadith about like your actions are based on your intentions, but there's also uh, perhaps you know an equally uh, uh, yeah equally noteworthy, noteworthy hadith, which is your actions are judged by the last of your actions. Yeah. That's a very interesting point. So that's mm. what makes Star Wars great, right? We can tie it back to the, some of the <laughs> things we like really it. deeply yeah, believe in. But no, let's let's should we talk about the, our ranking? Yes. Okay. Let's talk about a ranking, yeah. and then we'll talk about where Star well, Wars. Well, okay. Sorry. Before mm-hmm. we, yeah, because I know we're gonna we're, where we're headed. So I want to come back to this, the, like Palpatine. So Palpatine's return. I think you, Zaki, you kind of shared your thoughts on it. You haven't really, Umar. I mean, I just, I just uh, let myself be a kid and, and rolled with it. Yeah. Rolled I did. With. Like I was sitting next to Zaki in my first viewing, and I was like, oh, well. Yeah. I think I, I'm like <laughs> they're not wasting any yeah, time. Yeah, that, right? that was quick. And 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 the and the, the the they they did the teaser trailer right where they gave away that yeah. first scene, and that was the first scene in the movie. And you made an interesting point. I remember right after our Thursday night viewing, which was that it wasn't as jarring as it probably would have been. Would it would, would it have been would have been had they not done the little teaser that they did with the trailer, yeah. as well as his appearance at Comic Con. Right, right, right. So so what I so was we saying had four was four months to let it. Yes. So what I was saying was it would have been awesome if Last Jedi ended with this 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 first scene as a as a cliffhanger and then we had a couple of years to process that mm. he's back. That would have been one way to do it. But what they did instead was they basically let it in the first teaser trailer that he's back. So it wasn't a it wasn't a it wasn't a shock the first time you saw the movie. You had 6 months of trailers to process it. Mm-hmm. So you by the time you walked into the theater you already knew he was coming back, so you already kind of halfway believed it. That's true. If we found out in the movie as a surprise that he was back, it would have been very jarring. It would have taken us a few hours just for that to sink in, mm-hmm. and we wouldn't have. have and they waste no much. time, right? I mean, two things that surprised me about in terms of not wasting any time: it's literally there in the opening crawl, like Palpatine is back. And then the second thing about not wasting time was literally within the first two minutes of the movie, or maybe first ten minutes of the movie, we see Leia. Like I thought we wouldn't see Leia until later, right? Leia is there in that first scene beyond Kylo Ren and the and and Palpatine, right? Right. When they first come to well, right? I I mean, we we get the thing with the Millennium Falcon first, and then oh, that's right. Sorry, yeah, which was Mm -hmm. right, right? yeah, which was the bit that we see at the Mandalorian episode. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Which the last Mandalorian episode was meant to tease. So it was meant to tease something about. something about uh, the rise of Skywalker. And so I was like, oh, they're not teasing anything about the rise of Skywalker. They're just showing us a little trailer. It was like at the end of whatever one of the movies where the, the like the post credit scene was the Avengers um, uh, trailer. Right. You're like, oh, was one, yeah, I wanted a real post credit scene. But then after, obviously, you watch the movie and you realize, wait a minute, they yeah. teased something else in that episode, which is the Force's ability to heal. And we've never seen that. And we see that not only Ray doing that, right? But we also see Baby you know, Yoda. Baby Yoda. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was the I almost hesitated because I'm like, wait, there's gotta be a name. Are we gonna get a reveal? By the no. way, apologies yeah. to some of our international listeners <laughs> who uh, aren't getting Disney Plus yet. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah, you're missing out because Mandalorian is <laughs> great. Um, and and we'll yeah, and, and and that's a little teaser for I think where we're gonna what we're gonna talk about with regards to where the franchise is headed. But yeah, okay. So so Palpatine, we we just kind of roll with it. We yeah, roll with roll it because it. it's like you know what we've come to kind of roll with that. it. And I mean, and we also know that in, in the Star Wars universe, you know, dying or being thrown down a a, a reactor shaft doesn't mean anything. Right. Uh, apparently not, because Maul lives it, like lives yeah, through it. Right. Uh, Darth Maul, and then also Luke. Uh, oh, doesn't yeah, he point. get thrown? Uh, and uh, Kylo, and and you know, look, Kylo. The, yeah, remember he gets thrown yeah, down. He gets at tossed the end down. Too. Her, he gets oh, tossed into a pit. Right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, a la Elsa in Indiana Jones and Last Crusade. That's what it reminded me. Of. Yeah, but but no, I look. I, you know, these are these are you know, it's it's like modern day movie serials. So it's. You know, I think you have to accept uh, a certain amount of baked in absurdity, mm. yeah, as part of sort of the the, the tonal mix. You know, mm. and the other point is going to what I was saying earlier. You know, this is a nine chapter saga, sure, that begins with the machinations of Palpatine. So weaving him in as the big bad of the third trilogy is actually tonally the most appropriate way to end. So true. Happy accident, because of course, this is of necessity, because Ryan Johnson, you know, kiboshed uh, Diet Palpatine yeah. in the second one. <laughs> right? Yeah. And Which is why I had no or problem... Palpatine light, Palpatine. a la impeachment light. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I, but truthfully, that's why actually I had no problem with the way they dispensed with the character of Snoke, because I thought it led to the more interesting Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, who's just like a raging lunatic. That's really interesting, and then it I allows like that. us here. Exactly. But you bring in Palpatine here, suddenly... You have this; it it stitches all of mm-hmm. these movies together, and mm-hmm. I think that's so much more effective uh, in in so many ways. And and honestly, me personally, when uh, at, it starts, oh, the dark side of the force, blah blah blah, many abilities people consider unnatural, which is calling back to a similar line, the exact same the exact line same in line. Revenge of Sith. Me, I'm like, okay, yeah, you know what in, I mean. In fact, there's also when I forget what's there's a moment where you hear Palpatine's voice. Also, echo another line from Revenge of the Sith. Did you guys catch that? Yes, but right. I don't, I don't remember I don't, the line though. It's about well, the line is about uh, the ability to bring life, like uh, the ability to save those who, who who are dead. Okay, and you hear it as a whisper when something else is happening. Yeah, I don't remember when. Hmm, I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> so, okay. So, what else? But, Anything uh, else on the on the movie? Okay. You talk so, about? but uh, and the, the other thing that okay. So, I, I yeah, I rolled with the beginning in Palpatine being back and all that stuff. The ending and some of the stuff with Palpatine, like I, I remember like on the, the the second time I saw it, the first time I saw it was with you guys, but the second time I saw it was with my wife and my kids. And my and my 10-year-old leans over to me towards the end of the movie and she's like, oh, this is like Harry Potter and Endgame. Huh. And what she was referring <laughs> to specifically was like Voldemort kind of not mm-hmm. being fully formed, mm. but but gaining strength as the movies mm. progress. In this case, gaining strength as the scene progresses. And then, of course, in the very end, when all the heroes come, and she's talking about... And like, Lando's the, like, on your left. That, exactly. oh, <laughs> he might, he okay. might as well have said, on your left, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and I thought, wow, you know, uh, that's very astute. And yeah. and I and I kind of felt a little bit of that as well because he's and then the whole dyad of the force or the dyad in the force. I mean, these are all things that you just have to kind of roll. You with. roll with it, right? You roll. With and, it. But you know, never heard of a dyad, you, but we'll roll with it. You you made the comparison to yeah. the the portal scene at the end of Endgame. Yeah, I think uh, that scene with the spaceships is meant to evoke to, that. Evoke that. However, I think the more effective parallel is. The voices that Ray hears. Oh, to agree. me, that's the portals scene from the Avengers, but in this, which is Ray uh, evo- the the prayer. Right? She says, "Be with me, yeah. be with me." Right? Uh, and then she connects with the Force. Right? And it's all the Jedi that's... who have communed with the Force. That was nice. That was that beautiful was really because nice. what I didn't catch the first time, and even though I obviously heard the line and everything, was that's an immediate callback to what you see when we first meet Ray. Um, training with Leia yes. in this movie, which is she's meditating and she wants to connect with the voices of the past, yeah. and she's and she's unable to do so. Yeah. But at the end, she is, and she connects with. And what I love. Who is, do we hear? I mean, I, I know. I mean, so just going down the yeah, list. Yeah. I mean, I mean, we hear the first person we hear is Ewan McGregor. Yes. Uh, as Obi Wan Kenobi, young Obi Wan Kenobi. These are your final steps, which is in in 
The Force Awakens, we hear you and McGregor's Obi Wan Kenobi. When say, she these touches are your, the lightsaber, these are your first steps. Exactly. Right. Uh, we also hear Hayden Christensen as Anakin, and he says, "Bring balance," as I did, or something to that effect. Which yeah. I'm like, well, Anakin, not for nothing, but uh, yeah. he did a lot of other stuff too before you brought balance there, <laughs> Chief. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we hear Mace Windu. Uh, what is oh we hear Sam Jackson we hear Sam Jackson we hear Qui-Gon Jinn yes I caught that uh, the second we, time we hear Yoda of course we also hear uh, Kanan Jarrus who is the lead character from the Rebels animated series uh, Freddie Prince Jr. Uh, we also hear uh, Ahsoka who is another character from the Clone Wars series mm. and she was Anakin's apprentice and my kids pointed this out so they're because they're they love this show they're like so Ahsoka's dead and I'm like <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Sorry. She's one with the force She's now, one son. One with the force now. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll need Dave Filoni to address that. We also hear um, uh, Luminara, who's voiced by Olivia Dabo. We also hear uh, Isla Secura, who's the blue uh, Twi'lek Jedi. We see her get killed in Revenge of the Sith. Wow. But she's a character in the animated series, too. So there, And there's a few others in there, I think. But uh, for me, as a fan of the TV shows, I was like, oh, wow, that, they're really you know stitching that in. But the, Qui-Gon Jinn, come on, think about that. Yeah. Like, we haven't heard Qui-Gon Jinn's voice since episode two. Yeah, that was great. Right? Yeah. And I, you know what's funny? Is I've had this weird relationship with the prequels, but I'm like team prequel now. Oh. And <laughs> I really am. And so anything that weaves those films into the fabric of this story, I am all on board with. Because I truly, I think these three films actually make the prequels a lot richer. You know, I have to, I have to agree with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've, my. I mean, they are flawed. Oh, don't get me wrong. Yeah, flawed in execution, yes. but I think in but terms not in concept. Of, that's right, not in concept. And yeah. again, to my point earlier, at least what the prequels did have was it was a cohesive vision. Yeah. Now you can disagree with again the vision Many and the execution. The you can right. disagree about a 1950s style diner existing. In the Star Wars universe. You can agree enough, I actually or, really like that scene, but that's all Or right. road racing. You, you can right. disagree with Death Sticks being like a thing. You can yeah. disagree with a character being called uh, Elon Slees Bagano. You don't need any Death Sticks. Yeah, but you know what? I'm down. Yeah. I'm okay. But but my yeah. point is, yeah. uh, you know, and and just to dip back into Last Jedi very yeah, briefly, sure. when, when Luke is talking about the events of those films, and he says the legacy of the Jedi is failure. Mm. They allowed this to happen. They, I mean, he's not wrong, right? And and it's all it, that's all textual. I think that was Lucas's intent. The, it, the intent f- of Lucas with the prequels is not, oh, look at how the Jedi got brought down by this. It was the Jedi let themselves they 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 brought their own order down. That's by design. So so it all fits. It all connects. So what? Okay. So does this all does this also fit? Which is. To me, the end of the the end of um, Return of the, uh, the end of Last Jedi was this idea, and not only the end, but kind of what's teased throughout, or what is a what is a narrative throughout the movie, which is this idea that the Force is not connected to bloodline or blood. The Force is not just connected to bloodline, and that's still out there, right? There's the end of Last Jedi plus what we see in With Finn. And that's what I'm saying. So, well, let's talk about that because Finn. Is it's been what I mean, it's pretty clear that you've said, well, it's clear, but you've said that, uh, or you, you, both of you, we were talking off mic earlier. Abrams has gone on the record as saying that Finn is force sensitive, yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that. In fact, the feeling um, he has, I I really want to see, like, like I said, one of the successes of this movie is that it actually made me interested in seeing at some point. An episode ten mm. with these characters. I don't even need the original trilogy, which is going to happen. By it, the way, it'll happen. Sure thing. And and the good thing, and and he can play around with this idea, right? Uh, and there's a ton of you know, there's a ton of stuff you could do. The fact that she's a Skywalker is interesting. Um, the fact that well, I want to talk about that. The fact that we... the, there's no there's no relationships. Like she doesn't have a relationship, uh, you know, between two characters like a romantic relationship that could be uh, explored. Um, so there's a ton of stuff that could that they could do, which would be really interesting, right? And, yeah. and, and, and so speaking of like her not being a Skywalker, but kind of being a Skywalker because that's the last line of the movie, um, which is, why couldn't she redeem the Palpatine name? Because, again, it's like being Larry Hitler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I, I mean, I'm I'm not even trying to make light. Like that's no. to me, that's the analogy. I think you're like, missing a generation there because what was you, the fault you, of her parents? Do you honestly think her father kept that name if he was in hiding? 
Uh, right? We don't. We we'll, we'll never know. We'll never we know. He didn't. And then again, Obi Wan Kenobi was in hiding, and he kept the last name Kenobi. So clearly, and and he put Luke in hiding, and with his family, she, with his father's name. So the whole hiding concept doesn't really. If play, she already had but, that name, and she kept it, that's one thing. But to add, to take it on, yes. It, it made way more sense for her to take on the Skywalker name. And to be honest, from a movie, from a movie like connectivity point of view, you, yeah. you keep the story alive in, of I, the Skywalkers. I, th- in I think she is what, like six, five, six, when we see her separated from, right. right? If she had had the name Palpatine, she would know it. It, it I, I don't think there's any way mm. she grew up with that as her name. Gotcha. I don't think there's any way. Right. Right. So for her at the end to then, yeah, it's. I mean, I think. I think you know, it's funny, right? Because because just going back to what we were saying earlier, right? That whole uh, kill the past, you know, or or forget the past, burn, uh, kill it if you have to. Whatever he says, right? And and I think if we talk about what this trilogy is about, to me, it's about legacy and and what we make of it. Yeah. Right. Do we view the past as a prism or a prison? Hmm. Which, hey man, like what we teased earlier, which was, I mean, that's a philosophical conversation that is, you know, that is a part of Islamic tradition for the last yeah. thousand plus years, which is, you know, where, what, it, like, 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 you know, there's the akal and the nakal, right? There's the tradition and then, there, you know, applying intellect to it. Yeah. There's ijtihad versus taqlid. I mean, these are age old conversations, even in Islamdom. So yeah. fascinating and, that you and, say that. And, and, you know, just to, just to add to that, this whole notion of oh uh you know the jj uh, abrams brought back in the force about bloodlines and that yeah but he uh, you know the whole question after the force awakens oh is she a kenobi is she a skywalker well now we find like now she she finds out she's part of a legacy she doesn't want to embrace she wants to run away from mm. right and so now it's it what's in her blood but this this darkness and she's choosing well i'm not i'm choosing to reject that part of who i am Right. right. So I think there's just as much validity there. And I said, like I said, I think I think the way in which all three of these films unconsciously it wasn't planned that way, right? Because we already discussed that. And yet they're part of this dialectic. And each one, you know, uh, uh, to me, the scene at the end of Last Jedi when uh, Luke gives Leia the dice and he says, "No one's ever gone." Mm-hmm. And now that foreshadows seeing Han again. In the next movie, mm-hmm. that wasn't planned, but it's these little echoes, right? Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, Ray going to the old Lars homestead. I was just about to say, going back to the moisture farm, right? Now, now it's funny, right? Because on the one hand, you say, "Well, why would she go there? Like, she has no reason to go there." Like yeah. we do. Yeah, that's right. We know, we know that place. Right. And there was something very haunting yes. to me. I was talking about this with, with my wife yesterday. I was like. You go to this place. It's like we all. It's like we lived there. We lived in that. We all yeah. lived in that house, right? right? But it's like abandoned. And you say, you know, once upon a time, there were bodies. Once upon, like, and but it's all. It's just sand. It's and I'm like, that's life. You know yeah. what I mean? There's something yeah. so haunting about that. There is. Um, but you know, when I think about it. She buries those lightsabers right near, uh, probably where Shmi Skywalker is buried. Yeah. You know. So it's right. a weird kind of. Beautiful, you know, and then we and we we also the reveal of her own lightsaber that she is now yes uh, from her staff from her staff right. oh is it from the staff yeah yes. really yeah, yeah. you I can see the, by the by the handle by the handle yeah. and oh, and it's interesting. yellow interesting and it's yellow yeah, which it's I yellow. think and Star Wars nerds might not like I'm like yeah you <laughs> I'm looking nerds, at you we're looking not. at you both Perez and I, I are just staring you down I'm right like you nerds you might know I genuinely I I don't know the like the expanded yeah. fiction, but I'm sure there's some explanation. Of it. Mm. Um, well, we know what we're doing on Wikipedia. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wiki. Uh, yeah, and I, and I love that. I mean, to me, that was there was no perfect, no better way to end the, the either the nine part or the or the or the last of the trilogies, as it were. If this is, it, uh, it is not. It is not. <laughs> so let's let's rank. Then quick, to go quick, back quick to the uh, to to the Lars home. Let's rank. So, Omar, then, Omar yeah. you, you start. Okay. That's right, because so, you love lists. As long I, love, as I do you. love lists. And, okay, so I'm going to say, and, and I'm going to caveat this by saying, even as I am speaking right now, I'm, it, I'm, I am I'm think we're getting to the point where, it's just, all, your where it's just all Star Wars. Agree, and that's a great that. thing. Yeah. It's yeah. a great thing to not have to rank them and just love love every episode sure. as it comes, right? Sure. Uh, but if I'm going to rank it, I'm going to say Return of the Jedi, 
I know it's not perfect, but it's got that just yes. the last third of it is just perfection for me. Uh, and it's like it, it captures that youth, yeah. right? Uh, Empire Strikes Back, Rise of Skywalker. Wow. A New Hope. For me, it's like, I'm Zeki is like, you mean Star Wars. A New <laughs> Hope, <laughs> um, Rogue One, Revenge of the Sith, um, Force Awakens. Last Jedi, Attack of the Clones, Phantom Menace, Solo. That's a lot of Star Wars movies, right yeah. there. And they're all that good. Is. I love them all. Yeah. I I, I think uh, for the for the purpose of brevity, I'm not gonna do like a whole list, but uh, in in terms of like what I consider my personal favorites, uh, I would Empire Strikes Back has always been my favorite. Yeah. Uh, followed by Star Wars and um, uh, the Last Jedi among the saga movies. Um. And then, and then you know the rest. I kind of bunched together, and it's funny. Well, I'm, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, or and 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 you did make an official list, at least on some 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 social media platform, and, and I think you actually rank Rogue One in your top three. I, I rank I found Rogue that One very higher interesting. Than, than Last Jedi. Yeah, yeah, and and no, and and a New Hope, I think, or no, and, and Return of the Jedi. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, did you just say that? I, I actually yeah. rank Revenge of the Sith higher than than Return of the Jedi too. Wow. I really like that one. But Rogue uh, One, why? Well, why? I'm just curious. You know, I think that there's because it ranks up there for me too. It's awesome. But I don't know. It it's is. Awesome. It really it's, is. I mean, it it's truly unlike any other Star Wars movie, right. right? And and you know, it's darker and grittier or whatever. But I mean, I I think it gives you know, it gives a really interesting analysis. Uh, not an analysis. Sorry, an uh, an interesting sort of uh, uh, depiction of the cost yes of this war right so i mean unlike we've ever seen right I think, we I lose think. every single one of our main characters right every single one every single one um and not only that we also see when you know in terms of cost there's also the cost to let's say like on a on a spiritual level or to, to one's soul because we also see these characters doing things that are less than perfect yeah Right, I mean, uh, Ka- Cassie and Andor, Cassian's well, coming, Ka- coming soon to Disney Plus. Plus <laughs> right, that's the well, and and uh, to that point, I mean, I think I think Rogue One actually has one of my favorite scenes in any Star Wars movie, which is uh, where Jin Erso, played by uh, Felicity Jones, is seeing a transmission I that love her father left for her. Wow, what a and he it's it's Mads Mikkelsen is amazing, and yeah. he's like he's telling her, I I want you, I've thought about you, I I love you so much, and you just see her just break down just just like she's about to start crying and i it's just so beautiful and poignant and and, you know the idea that the entire victory of the rebellion which in star wars in star wars time Mm -hmm. they measure time based on bby yeah right it's distance i know Uh, bby (laughs) and aby before the battle of yavin and after the battle of yavin fascinating that's so so like you know, Force Awakens is 34 BBY or whatever it is, right? In other words, that's how important that event was wow. in Star Wars land, right? Uh-huh. And you say, like, that all happened because this guy yeah. basically gave his life to ensure that that would happen, right? And there's this, I mean, it, to me, it richens, uh, it, you know, uh, Star Wars, that's the original right. Star Wars. I agree. Know? Sorry. I, yeah, I, I, I cut you off on your list, um, but yeah. But, but yeah. yeah, one thing, one stipulation I make is I don't dislike any Star Wars movies. Mm-hmm. So it's it, that's why once we move past like the top three, it's all it's all yeah. kind of lumped together. Yeah, but yeah. but uh, I will say this: I started the week uh, liking Force Awakens more than The Rise of Skywalker, and now I yeah I believe the the opposite. Nice. Even though I like them, I like all three of these. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm I like them all. Yeah. 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 I even like Solo, even though it's the bottom of the list. I, Solo is probably the bottom of my. Well, no, that's not true. I, I, to, to me, the Phantom Menace is still probably at the bottom, and I'm not going to go through the rankings. I mean, to me, the original trilogy will always be my top three, and uh, you know, the, 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 there are reasons sometimes where I place Return of the Jedi at the top mm-hmm. because of nostalgia alone and the green lightsaber. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> or first seeing the green lightsaber, I should say, as a as a as a ten year old or whatever. Um, uh, and then, but then the, there's parts of me that uh, Empire Strikes Back just. Yeah. I mean, it just transported me even as a young child. It was in first grade. So I'll, I'll never forget that. So to me, and then the rest kind of yeah play out. But anyway, I don't want to, yeah, <laughs> for the sake of time, I'll just say that. So, so okay. So yeah. just as we wrap up, yeah. where do you want to see Star Wars go from here? Where do you want to see? 
Well, uh, I'll look forward to, you know, in between five and ten years, being back here with you guys talking about episode ten uh, of the, the saga. Folks, saga ain't going away. Okay, Disney's selling it hard. I'm telling you right now. Uh-huh. They paid $4 billion to be able to keep uh, blasting that John Williams music and getting... You know, oh, having that crawl. Sorry, and we got to say, I mean, John Williams. I was, I was literally about uh, to say, yeah. We, I mean, he is the MVP yeah. of this whole. He really was saga. and finally gets a cameo. That's right, as as a character called like o- Oto Massa or something like. That. Like if you put the letters together, it's Maestro. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so 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 you see episode yeah. ten. What, okay, it's gonna happen. What but else? but between then, uh, here's here's what I would love to see mm-hmm. is something set. Within the lost era between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, focusing on our original characters. So, de aging? Well, realistically, this would have to be animated or something, but something, something canonical mm. that gives us a return to those characters having adventures together. Th- that training because we get a tease of that, that. Stuff, so you know yeah. what's interesting? We haven't talked about that, but like that Luke trains Leia. Yeah, and, yeah, see and, that. and you know what's interesting is. The current, the sequel trilogy characters are going to be able to have that second trilogy yeah, still that, being that, in their that youth. Han, Luke, and Leia, and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of uh, yeah. So it's a bit of a do over there. Yeah. But and, else? Oh, and and of course, uh, as Disney all of you Plus. guys are, yeah. the the Obi Wan Kenobi series uh, is yes. I, I I I'm so excited for that. Me too. Me too. I mean, yeah. Ewan McGregor signing on alone, but now after yeah. Uh, having a chance to revisit that universe uh, in the form of Rise of Skywalker, I want to see Obi-Wan's adventures on Tatooine yeah, yeah, or wherever yeah. his adventures took him. I, I want to see, I, I want to see as much TV as possible because yeah. I think it's a great, it's a great, uh, we were, Zeki and I were talking about how comics, Marvel comics is like R&D for the MCU. I think the TV shows, you could throw a whole bunch of stuff on there. You, the fans are way less toxic. You can experiment with ideas. For the movies, I think them jumping around in time and not being chronological got them in trouble. Like going from, uh, you know, post Return of the Jedi to back to pre A New Hope and then Solo, it confused the mainstream. I, I actually think, hey, stick with the episode 10, 11, 12 format. I know you're going to miss out on things like a Knights of the Republic trilogy, which goes back a thousand years or what have you. But uh, you could do that on the TV shows. So mm. that's what I hope. I want to see a ton of TV, like as you know, Marvel level, four, five, six shows at a time. Uh, and then the episodes continue. The saga movies continue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think I, think I, I, I kind of follow the same way. Um, I, I, I'd be fine if we don't ever revisit even the new characters and that the new episodic movies take us into another or, or just give us a glimpse of the universe that we've never even seen. So I, I'd have no problem with that either, um, whether or not we see these new characters uh, and certainly don't have anything to do with the Skywalker saga. So, um, but I am. Um, and, and and by the way, uh, you know, for a while there, there have been the, they announced like a Ryan Johnson trilogy. Oh yeah, that's, which which I, that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. No, no way. Unfortu- unfortunately, it's not gonna happen. But he but he he said he'd be interested in directing some Mandalorian. So give him give him maybe give him the trilogy as a miniseries on Disney yeah, Plus. I, right? I and what was it. the on again and off again thing with the creators of um, Game of Thrones? Game of Thrones. That's just off. That's that was just on and then off and that's it. But what was that meant to be? They Knights said of the or some, Knights of the Old Republic. Something in that era, something thousands of years. The first Jedi. No, the, the beginning of the Jedi. Or no, it Plus. would have been a big screen. Oh. There is a Star Wars movie supposedly coming out in December yeah, it 2022. It it's not coming out. You think? No, it's not going to You out. actually think it's going to get canceled? They're, they're not going to. They're going to quietly reschedule. No movie at all in 2022? They, they would have to be in advanced like pre-production oh, right, wow. now, right now for that to be happening. That's that's big. If, if that and, doesn't happen, and, that and I know you're you're all like like you're all, all in tune with the mojo. But um, how's the how's the? I mean, we know how it's doing critically, but commercially, the the movie. Yeah. Well, I mean, what I read is it, you know it had like a hundred and seventy five million dollar opening weekend because we're recording this on Monday night after, after the weekend. Opening weekend, right? right? So so that's a drop from uh, the first two in this trilogy right but i i think i think those those metrics are a little skewed because the force awakens came after 35 years or whatever it was of build up right uh the sequel to return of the jedi right and and i think this one now star wars is a little bit more ordinary 
right? Yeah. And so if you say, oh, well, this is ordinary, well, $175 million, I mean, that's wrath of God money. You know, that's... <laughs> right? you know, and you know what's That's a, just domestically, but it's already made like 350, 400 worldwide. But, so it's going to top a billion. But, but China, well, well, hold on. Yeah. China, forget it. Yeah. It's lost cause because it's already flopped in China. Yeah. However, here's something important to realize is that this past weekend, unlike any of the previous uh, ones recently, uh, it's directly before Christmas. So Saturday was like, shopping day we got two weeks of of holidays so the story to look at like it opened fine it's nothing to be worried about see how it does second weekend and then you'll Mm. have a better sense but i i would imagine that you know but you you know what's interesting just going back to the china thing so china is very very quickly becoming the number not number two but number one it's going to become uh, the number one uh (laughs) market for big blockbusters in the world bigger than the u.s and star wars is flopping big i mean every single one of the disney movies has made less and less this one's like it's going to total well, like 17 well, well, million. star wars has never right been successful no but, China, I, but so i guess my question disney is. my question though is how does that impact the future no i'm just wondering right? and this is maybe just food for thought mm-hmm. because i i know we, we've been going for a while but it's interesting that that's a communist country with uh, that hasn't had religion in in, in I mean, I'm sure individuals do, but on, on a national level, there's no re- organized religion, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's an interesting. I wonder if that's related. The fact that it's a country with no, no, no official religion mm-hmm. and no, um, you know, a lot, a lot more atheists in in the country. I wonder if that means that that connects to them not really connecting to Star Wars, which t- going back to our original point has a very spiritual mm. uh, message. Interesting. I think it might be. M- more simple than that, which is that the original trilogy was never released there, so there isn't that long, like that institutional uh, familiarity, right? So, so as far as China is concerned, Star Wars sort of sprang into being twenty years ago, and it's just like everything else over there. You know what I mean? There's nothing that makes it different. However, to that point, think about the fact that this is a friend. I mean, Solo, notwithstanding, which is sort of like an outlier, these movies easily clear a billion without China. Mm. Right, like uh, Rise of Skywalker is gonna make more than a billion dollars, so there, you're gonna see a lot of henny penny skies falling type stuff. Billion dollar movies, it's, it's not, <laughs> you know, it doesn't happen all the time. But Dis- but Disney's gonna do something. Oh, they to are. try to try to uh, you know course I, correct in I, China. I, I it'll think, be interesting. I, I wonder. To... I wonder if there's any. You know, I think China is like the ship has sailed, man. Like I don't know. I don't know. They. I don't know. Watch uh, watch uh, the next trilogy star star like all these Chinese actors. Are. Right. Well, they tried. They tried with the Rogue One, right? You yeah. had Donnie Yen. You had uh, mm. the actor who played Baze. I forget his name. How did that movie play in China? None of these have done well. Oh, in China. No, no, None okay. of them. But they've gotten less and the, less the, over time. The Force Awakens did the best. Okay, I can see and that. And they've gone downhill from there. No, no. I think Solo. They were like space pilot, or like they tried to call it something totally different. You know, uh, it didn't work. Right. You know? But uh, wow, what a discussion! Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me on, guys. Wow. Well, know, it was great to have you on. And I know we've been talking about uh, the end of a saga, the end of a. I was about uh, to say the <laughs> saga ends, uh, but it continues. And uh, uh, with that in mind, I just want to uh, put out uh, to our audience that uh, this will mark the end of my time here as a regular presence. I'm, I'm hopefully hoping I'll, I'll be back uh, on occasion. Hopefully, when we have to talk about. <laughs> Stuff like this. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's the past six years have been just a pleasure to see uh, what this podcast has grown into. And I'm humbled beyond words when people come up to me or people tell Pervez about, you know, some conversation we've had mm-hmm. that's really affected people in a meaningful way. And, you know, it's it's been my pleasure to sort of be part of getting this boat seaworthy. Uh, but the beauty of, I think what we've built here is that it, it doesn't need, uh, you know, the the same person at the helm. And so I'm happy to sort of step back and let new people come in. And, uh, that's at least part of the reason why we brought Umar on here. That's right. Hey, <laughs> surprise. Well, I, I want to say before we, like, before we, like, yeah, yeah. Talk about Omar or, or yeah, tease that or like probably lean into it is, it's been it's been an absolute pleasure to work with Zucky, and I mean Zucky was the co-creator of this show, all in all, and so uh, I don't think the show could have been what it is, 
you know, to this point, had it not been for Zucky's creative input and the conversations that we've had have been, you know, um, just, you know, uh, have, have just been so much more enriched because of Zucky's presence and, and what he brings to those conversations. So I'm going to certainly miss that voice. Um, and I know our listeners are going to miss the voice of Zucky on the podcast, but, um, you know, again, I want to just thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for, for taking the show where it's gone in these last six years and the energy and the input that you've put in. Um, but, uh, and, and yeah, but absolutely we'll have you back on to not only talk about film, but anything else that I think, uh, where your, I think invaluable contribution will be, will be really felt. So, um, thank you, you know, and I think the listeners feel the same way as well. And, um, you know, of course you can continue hearing Zucky's voice, not only as a frequent repeater on this podcast, but also on his many other endeavors that he has out there. Um, but yeah, this was sort of meant to be poignant in the sense that this was sort of the passing of the lightsaber a little bit. (laughs) Uh, from from, from Zucky to the young Padawan Padawan here to my right, which is uh, Umar Ansari. So... Um, I guess welcome to the show, Umar, officially. Yeah, well, well, like, uh, thanks for for inviting me and uh, definitely not... not, uh, No one even tried to fill the shoes that... uh, uh, Mr. Podcast Zucky Huston is, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know, he, he's, he's my brother-in-law. Yeah. Uh, he's married to my sister, but, and, but there'll be, you know, sometimes several days or weeks where I don't see him, but he's always in my car because he's got, uh, <laughs> literally yeah, in, in, in fact, in the back uh, seat. Yeah. My, 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 my daughter, form. exactly, exactly. <laughs> sometimes I'll leave, leave the podcast on and my, my, my daughter, who's his niece will be like, that's Zucky uncle. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, not definitely, um, been a, been a listener of the show, both of you on the show for six plus, or how many every years, right? Four years or whatever. How long have you been doing the show? Quite some time. There's a huge library of, of back, uh, of back episodes. Um, so yeah, I'm a, I've been a fan of the show. Absolutely. Um, so, and a believer in what you've done, but also excited about what can be done. Um, and yeah, I'll just try to come in and contribute what I can. So what we're going to be fig- talking about what that means exactly. offline. Right. And uh, we'll come back, I guess, in 2020. And That's right. We're going to be welcoming the new year with not only a new co-host, but also perhaps a new direction of the show. And, and I'm really excited about where that takes us. But uh, yeah, I mean, me asking Omer to sort of come on when I knew Zucky was going to be taking a little bit of a step back was not accidental. Um, you know, Omer and I not only share a long history together. I think there's chemistry there. I think there's chemistry that we can hopefully replicate on the mic as, as much as we do in person. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to, um, you know, sharing this endeavor with, uh, the voice that I think Umar very uniquely as Zucky did kind of brings to the show. So I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that. I'm excited going into the new year. I'm excited and rejuvenated in terms of the direction of the show as well. And so, um, we're looking forward to bringing on 2020 with a bang. And so, Zucky, for, uh, I guess, for good old time's sake, please <laughs> close us out, and as we often do, and tell us where people can find you and where people can continue to engage you, I guess, now, more yeah. poignant than ever, um, um, uh, outside of Diffuse Congruence. Well, as far as Diffuse Congruence, uh, we have a Twitter account, which is, uh, uh, it is on Twitter. It is comprised of letters. What is it? Do we remember? Okay, so this is... This, this is a great, great radio right here. Uh, d- do a Google search for. We're gonna, this, oh, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but you can you can f- uh, hit like on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash diffuse congruence. You can message us there. You can also email us at diffuse congruence at gmail.com. If you're looking for me, you can find me on Twitter at Zucky's Corner, Z A K I S Corner. And uh, that's also my website, just at it.com. And I look forward to hearing from you. And I look forward to being back here. And uh, Pervis, uh, where are you at? I'm around, and I'm going to continue being around on the show, so you're not going to miss me too much. And uh, uh, if you want, if you're if you're really feeling uh, the, uh, the the pangs of, of withdrawal of hearing Zucky's voice, um, you can always check out Movie Film Podcast, which is a great podcast for those who want to check out uh, Zucky's ruminations on. It, it's film. more more of this, all all this that you heard today. It's just it's it's a lot of that. There's that, and I think another uh, uh, endeavor of yours that I don't know if you have officially teased on the show, but people can also check out your other podcast, which I find equally engaging, which is Nostalgia Theater. Nostalgia Theater, thank you so much. Yeah, that's uh, that show features uh, in-depth, hour-long conversations with filmmakers, actors, uh, writers, directors uh, about you know things that 
they have made that uh, have impacted us uh, emotionally in the past. So. That's right. So we look forward to welcoming the new year with you, our listeners, and so uh, look forward to catching you on the next episode of Diffuse Congruence.